I've been making YouTube How I Shot It videos for five years now, but today, for the first time, I'm going to be using a camera that is not made by Sony. In today's video, I'm using for the very first time the Nikon, Nikon, Z, Z, Eight. I can't wait to use this. So, let's crack on. Now just in case you're not aware, I actually used to shoot with Nikon cameras way back in the day when I first started out in wedding photography and for the first 10 years of me being a wedding photographer, I did shoot with Nikon cameras. I started with the Nikon D70, then I went to the Nikon D300, then I went to the Nikon D700, then the D800, then the D810. And I never really wanted to leave Nikon, but I did want to use a mirrorless camera. The reason I did leave Nikon is because when they launched their mirrorless cameras it only had one card slot and for me as a wedding photographer that just didn't sit very well with me so on the day that Nikon announced their mirrorless camera that is the day that I first bought the Sony A9 and I've never regretted that since but it's really nice to finally get my hands back on a Nikon camera it feels like going back to my roots a little bit so I say in this video I'm going to just give you my first thoughts on this few thank yous to do first of all firstly to Nikon themselves for sending me this equipment unfortunately this is not mine but they've been very kind and sent me a couple of Z8s a selection of lenses so thank you to everybody at Nikon also a massive a massive thank you to Standon Hall, which is the amazing venue that we're at today. It's a beautiful venue in Staffordshire in the UK. So a big thank you to all the staff at Standon. And also a big thank you to Rebecca, who I haven't worked with before, but who looks amazing. So that's all the thank yous done. So let's get on with the, it's not a review as such, as you know, I don't do reviews, but what I do like to do is just tell you about how I feel about certain cameras. And the first thing that I can tell you, this is the very first time that I've shot with this camera, not even took a shot with it yet. Yet, is that it feels chunky. Now I'm only comparing this to the Sony A9, which is what, obviously what I'm used to. I actually prefer this, I think, just because it feels better in the hand. How I would feel this on a wedding day after having hold this for 12 hours, I'm not sure, because it's definitely heavier, but I do like the chunkiness of it. And I remember if I go back to my very first review of the Sony A9, I think I did say the grip isn't ideal. This grip is really good. That's just the first thing that I noticed. But anyway, let's start by taking some natural light shots of Rebecca by the window. First of all, I'm gonna turn the lights off in here because I don't want any, any color cast or anything like that. So to start with, I'm going to shoot with the Nikon, it's unusual to say this, the Nikon 50mm f1.2. I'm going to take some very simple portraits. So Rebecca, let's ask you to stand a little bit further back if that's okay. And then it's going to just face slightly away from the window for me with, with your body, facing this way. And then just going to look back towards the light. So a little bit more this way with your body if that's alright. Just facing as if you're facing me. That's it. And then just your head's going to look back. That's beautiful. A lot of this is going to be very trial and error because it's all very new. The first thing that is, is tricky is that the ISO is not where I'm expecting it to be. So let me just um, put my ISO down. So I'm going to shoot, first of all, f1.2 because why would you not? If you've got an f1.2 lens, you shoot at f1.2. Gorgeous, Rebecca. The thing that you notice is that there is no mechanical shutter in the Z8. Z or Z, it's very confusing. There's no mechanical shutter at all, so the shutter sound is so, so quiet, which I love. I can say as well that the eye autofocus, as you would expect, it's really, really good on here. It's, it follows Rebecca's eyes so, so well, and it's very, very snappy. But I do notice that already, I've been shot with it for only 30 seconds, this is a heavier camera than I'm used to. That's good, and it's also bad if you're shooting with it for a long period of time, I guess. Gorgeous, last one. Beautiful. I've just now asked Rebecca just to pop on this veil. It's a bit creepy, I apologize, Rebecca. But I'm gonna ask her just to wrap it round her. Just composing this shot as well, so that we've got the lamp in the background, which I just turned on. Really nice, Rebecca. Just looking down towards your shoulder. Gorgeous. In fact, Rebecca, can I just move you here, if that's okay? Actually, about there. Just gonna move the parrot. Sorry, parrot. Just composing this so that the lamp is behind Rebecca. And because Rebecca's got such nice natural light on her. Beautiful. Again, just, just casting your eyes down. Gorgeous. What's your favorite exercise to do in the gym? Um, I like about 
Nice. Look at looking at me, thinking about that pull down. Yes, pull it down, Rebecca. <laughs> Don't even know what that means. <laughs> Gorgeous. Thank you. I'm now going to change from the 50mm 1.2 to the lens that I'm very, very excited about, the 85mm 1.2. And here it is, the Nikon 85mm 1.2. It is a bit of a beast of a lens. It's very big, feels quite heavy, but let's face it, it is 1.2. I've long wanted Sony to bring out a 1.2 85mm because I think it's a beautiful lens for portraits and 1.2 will just melt that background away, especially as well if you want to shoot through foreground bone which I love to do. An 85 1.2 would be a dream lens. Just to give you a size comparison though, this is obviously the Nikon version. This is the Sony 85 and 1.8. Now it is only 1.8, but you can see the size difference. It's, it's pretty big. But let's see what we get with this. Really nice. And then just looking straight at me. Amazing. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Yeah, it's really nice. As you'd expect, it's just very, very snappy. As soon as you press back button focus, it locks on to Rebecca's eye. You'd expect that. Say, I'm used to that with the A9, but this is certainly very, very quick as well. The other thing which I noticed is when I pull the screen out to look at these images, is how far the screen comes out. Again, this is really good because I much prefer, especially to be able to shoot fully horizontal like this, which if you want to shoot low, then having that fully horizontal screen is, is brilliant. Doesn't quite go, unfortunately, doesn't articulate too much further back when we've got it up, up above us, but it's still nice and we can also pull it out completely for portrait shots. That's quite handy as well. I don't really shoot very many portraits, but you'd be able to do that. But yeah, the screen is nice. The screen's also bigger, and that's just because the camera physically is bigger. In fact, here's a little side comparison between the A9 here, the A92 and the Z8. Again, you can see size-wise, it's significantly bigger and heavier. I don't know if it's just a novelty. I don't know if I will always want the bigger, heavier cameras, but I do like the grip. Oh, it's, even when I'm holding this, that just feels good again. I don't know. They're both very, very good cameras. And whilst I've still got the 85, I'm just gonna shoot Rebecca with the veil on and with this lamp in the background. Yeah, I love this composition. Let's try and just really kill that ambient. In fact, what I'm going to do, Rebecca, I'd be a pain, just move you a little bit further forward, if that's all right. That's putting Rebecca nearer to the natural light, which means that the light source is going to be a bit brighter, which means that I can drop my exposure slightly. Gorgeous. And just moving your head. So you look at my hand here. That's it, yeah. That is really nice. Just wrap that veil so it's over just your shoulder here. That's it, yeah. Beautiful. Just looking. Yeah, gorgeous. And again, just cast your eyes down. Beautiful. This is the first time I've worked with Rebecca and she's brilliant. I'm thinking of those pull downs again, those sexy pull downs. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Okay, next up is the Nikon 35mm f1.8 lens. Now, if you followed my channel, you'll know that probably my favorite lens of all time is the Sony 35mm f1.8 lens. It's so small, so light, and this whole setup, which is the A92, the 35mm 1.8, is probably what I shoot at least half a wedding day just like this. This is the equivalent with the Z8. So it's still a smaller lens. It's not quite as small, but it's much smaller than the lens that I've been using before. So I can see that if I was to use the Z8 again, certainly on a wedding day, this would be my setup. And I like the fact that this end is so much smaller than the beast that we've just been using, the 50 mil and the 85 mil. So let's just see what this gives us. Beautiful, Rebecca. I'm gonna use the screen now. A bit higher. Okay, you can see there's my focus point here. And once I lock onto the eye, you can see it locks on really well. Again, you'd expect this. Gorgeous, Rebecca. Beautiful. I'm going to go even closer now to Rebecca. I'm just looking straight up at the camera. Yeah, amazing. Go shake the hips. Yes. Okay, for the first time then, I shot burst mode. This camera will shoot 20 frames a second in RAW, but 
I'm not going to shoot anywhere near that sort of speed. As a wedding photographer, we don't need that. If you're shooting sports or wildlife, maybe. But 20 frames a second is the same as the A9 shooting raw, and it's and I've, I'd never go into that higher burst mode. So what we're going to do now is have a play with the Nikon Z8 with some off-camera flash. So I want you to again stay in this room. It's a beautiful room here at Standen. So I've turned on the lamps, and they're going to expose. I'm going to expose for all these lamps and I'm going to shoot Rebecca from over here so that she's very central in the frame. Now, to do this, I need a very wide lens and thankfully Nikon very kindly have sent me a 14-24 2.8. So this is much wider than I'm able to have. My widest lens is a 16-35. Then now I can go to 14 mil. So that's going to enable me to fit in all of Rebecca and the dress here whilst being very close. I do need to be careful of distortion, but Rebecca's gonna be very central to the frame, so that shouldn't be a problem. As always, I'm using my Godox X2T trigger, which is a Nikon version as well. And we're gonna use the Magbox Pro 24 to light Rebecca. Very kindly held up by Helen, who didn't want to be on the camera, there you go. So let's see what happens here. So as always, I'm gonna start off by getting my ambient settings correct. So I'm gonna do that by turning off the trigger and I'm exposing here for the lamps that are behind Rebecca. That's all I'm really looking at. So 200 f2.8 ISO 400 on the Nikon 1424mm f2.8. So Helen, if I can ask you to use the mag box, please. Okay, so we've now got our ambient settings dialed in. I am at fully 14mm here. Also, just to point out, as you can see here, that the mag box has, just push it towards the light slightly, the grid on it as well, which is really good because it just stops the spill of the light. Really nice. That's gorgeous. Can I actually just be looking down slightly? That's it, beautiful, Rebecca. It's so quiet. Yeah, very, very good point. The thing that hits you when you are using off-camera flash is the shutter sound is virtually non-existent. So there is no mechanical shutter in this, it's all electronic. So you just hear like a little tiny something, but the loudest sound in this room is not coming from the camera, it's coming from the actual pop of the flash, which is crazy. And then can I just ask you with your right hand, just to be just playing with your hair on the, on the right hand side of your face, if that's okay. Look into the light, that's it, yeah. Gorgeous. And then just casting your eyes down from there. Perfect. Thank you so, so much to Rebecca. She's been amazing. Thank you to Helen for filming. Thank you to Standen Hall for the venue. And thank you to Nikon for allowing me to play with their new Z8. So what I want to do now is pass you over to me to talk to you about my thoughts of this camera, especially now that by the time you're seeing this video, I will have seen these files. At the moment, it's the first time I've used it, so I've not seen what these files look like. So really excited and interested to see so I'm going to pass you over to me. I'm going to start this by saying that I didn't want to like this camera because to even think about moving to another camera brand makes my eyes water. So I was keen to play with it, but I didn't want to like it. The other thing to point out is that at the time of recording this video, I've only used a Nikon Z8 on one day shooting, which is what you see in this video. Plus a second video that I made on the same day. Here's a little sneak peek. And we set the fire alarms off. <laughs> uh -oh. Oh, no. Smoke Ninja, you produce a lot of smoke. Sorry to stand in. <laughs> so I've barely used the cameras yet, but my initial impressions are very, very good. Although it isn't perfect, my main issue with the camera is the weight and the size of the body and the lenses. This isn't actually a problem on shoots like you see in this video, but on a wedding day where I can be on my feet for 12 hours at least with two cameras on me the whole time, that additional weight would really add up. And as I've just mentioned, if you've already bought into a camera brand, as I have obviously done with Sony, the cost of moving would be crazy high. I'm a full-time wedding photographer and to replace all the kit that I would need to in order to move to Nikon or to Canon for that matter would easily be in five figures. And realistically, the advantages that I would gain are pretty marginal for that cost. But, and this is a big but, if I was starting out tomorrow and I hadn't already bought into a system, would I buy this camera? And the answer is definitely yes. 
Would I buy it over the A9? Yes. And to be fair, that would be expected because the A9 is seven years old now. And the fact that I still love them, I think he's testament to how good they are and how far ahead of their time they were when Sony released them. A much fairer comparison would be to compare this camera against the A9 III. But I haven't tried one of those yet. So Sony, if you're watching and you want to send one to me, feel free. The Nikon Z8 intuitively feels great in the hands. I love the fact that it doesn't have a mechanical shutter the screen is fantastic and as you can see here the camera starts up and he's ready to take photographs almost instantly which is so important for wedding photographers especially when we have to be so reactive to moments the lenses for this camera as i've just mentioned are big and heavy but they are also incredible and they give amazing results. I also personally prefer 45 megapixels to say the 24 megapixels of the Sony A9. I do happen to think that 36 megapixels is probably the sweet spot for me as a wedding photographer, but I would take 45 megapixels over 24. And lastly, the files that come out of this camera are really beautiful. I've really enjoyed editing the photographs that you see in this video. Even how they look straight out of camera is really nice. Plus, I also know that Nikon are releasing firmware updates for this camera too, such as the newly released Rich Tone Portrait update, which sounds really exciting. And I will show you more about that in a future video. The only significant advantage that my current Sony A9s would have over the Nikon Z8 is that they are lighter and that there is a much more expansive range of available lenses. Plus, it's a much larger second-hand market too, so the setup cost would be much lower. So, as I said at the beginning of the video, I didn't want to like this camera, but I do like this camera, and I'll be very sad to say bye to it when it has to go back home. But please keep an eye on my channel because I do have a couple more Nikon Z8 videos on the way. So as always, if you've got any questions about anything I've done in this video, please do let me know in the comments. Thank you very much again for watching, and I will see you next time.